Hello everyone, I'm very glad to be here to share our recent work. The title of our work is Characterizing and Demystifying the Implicit Convolution Algorithm on Commercial Matrix Multiplication Observators. I'm Yang Jiezhou from Shanghai Jiaotong University. My supervisor is Professor Jing Wen Ren. I am a fourth year PhD student. My major is computer science, and I'm interested in computer architecture and high performance computing. I will give my presentation from four sections. Let me start from the background and motivation. Nowadays, CNN has led to its wide adoption in many fields, such as image classification, speech recognition, object detection, and text understanding. The most important part of CNN is convolutional operation, which takes up 19 to 99 percent of the computation and running time. Many accelerators have been created to address complex neural network computation. To support computational generality, many commercial accelerators such as Google's TPU and NVIDIA's Tensor Cores choose GEM as a basic computational primitive. But it is non-trivial to support convolution on the GEM specialized accelerators. To implement the conversion between convolution and GEM, Many recent work assumed explicit image column algorithm. The straightforward method performs an input transformation to prepare the load input feature map in the expanding matrix. The load matrix is generated and saved explicitly. Each row in the load matrix corresponds to the received field in a sliding window. The transformation and the computation are performed at two separate stages. As such, Load matrix can be consumed directly by GM engine without any hardware modification. We qualify the explicit and implicit image column on GPU from performance and memory. The data is measured on V100 GPU by using API from QDN library. We find that the explicit image column method is on average 28% slower, while incurring an additional memory overhead of 1.5 to 10 times. But the existing implicit image to column methods also have their limitations and shortcomings. We use Tensor Core as a case study to demonstrate the limitations here. While the Tensor Core computational gene will in a product, so each memory access is performed in the cumulative dimension of the input matrix. The input feature map is stored in the on-chip SRAM. Each memory access corresponding to the data within a sliding window, with a multi-bank SRAM and a large crossbar. The element in the input feature map is dynamically routed to the correct PE in the GM engine, effectively forming the load input feature map at the runtime. In this mode, SRAM access and GM computation can be overlapped. However, this design is unscalable because the size of the crossbar and the number of the SRAM banks would have been scaled proportionally to the PE array size in the GM engine, which to lead to unscalable hardware and in stride convolution. The size of the load matrix is much smaller. Thus, the gem latency is reduced significantly, whereas SRAM load time does not change, leading to performance degradation. We also demonstrated the different performance pattern for stridded convolution. The left figure presents the performance result on the different strides on GPU. GPU performance degraded significantly at large stride size. In the meantime, TPU does not show performance degradation. The difference between the TPUs and the GPU suggests that they potentially use different implicit image column designs, which also means there is a design space for implicit image column that has not been explored before. We proposed implicit channel first image column, a memory efficiency and hardware friendly implicit image column method that avoids the inefficiency associated with existing algorithm. We apply our method on TPUs and GPU to demonstrate the generality of our algorithm. Now, I will talk about our implicit channel first method and how we avoid the inefficiency associated with existing method. The philosophy of our implicit image column method is different from prior work. The key point is that we change the layout of the load matrix. In the existing channel last image column method, the load if 
is the feature map is expanded in the order of CI to HF to WF, which stores the HF times WF elements in a sliding window across all channels sequentially. In construct, our method constructs the dimension in the order of HF to WF to CI, which stores the element of the same position across the CI channels sequentially. In conclusion, our method simply shuffled the columns of the load matrix in the existing method. We call this is the channel first, since the channel dimension is on load first. Note that the reordering is conceptual, as the load matrix never physically exists. It is dynamically generated and consumed. Next, we will use a simple example to illustrate the adventure of the channel first algorithm. We first present the basic idea that allows us to use a simple closed buffer single bank on chip memory to serve an input feature map to the GEM engine. Assume an input feature map with add channel, each with a dimension 5 times 5. The figure at the bottom shows the input feature map layout in the SRAM. Each row is an unrolled vector of n channel. In the other word, each column consists of elements of the same position across channels. This allows the gym as a rate to read the data from the SRAM as a wide word rather than from different banks, thus simplifying the hardware. Note that when tiling is applied to the input feature map, as is commonly done when the entire input feature map set is too large for the SRAM, only a tile is stored in the SRAM at a time using this layout. Critically, although each element is read multiple times times, it will only appear once in your tile, so it will send to one physics PE. In this way, we can avoid closely multi-bank SRAM and close bar. Next, I will introduce the main insights of our algorithm. The first one is that, with the loop and memory layout transformation, the one-time-one -one convolution layer can be directly come to the gem computation without the need of an explicit image column method. Therefore, the computational procedure can be very convenient for the deployment to on the GIM engine. And the second one is that, to support a generic common layer with HF time WF filter size, we can decompose its computation to HF time WF iteration of GIM computation. The required input for each iteration of the GIM computation can be dynamically and regularly fetched from the on-chip memory as we analyzed before. Our channel first image column is insensitive to stride, since the elements of our data access are in the same position across the different channels. This results in a very simple address generation process. The performance of the existing method degrades in the strided convolution because the gem latency of a tile decreases, but the SRAM filling latency remains the same. In the channel first method, however, when the stride decreases, the size of each road input feature map tile proportionally decreases. Thus, the gem latency can still hide the SRAM filling latency without hurting performance. Now, I will talk about how we deploy our method on commercial gem accelerators. We first describe the basic idea of mapping the channel first image column algorithm to the TPU. To our best knowledge, we are the first to show how to support implicit image to column method in a systolic array in the public domain. The left figure shows a simplified single core TPU V2, which contains a 128 x 128 weight stationary systolic array. TPU V2 uses a unified on chip SRAM for storing data. The unified SRAM is split into 128 different SRAM arrays. The channel first implicit image to column method can be mapped to the TPU by leveraging the unique SRAM organizing of the TPU. We simply map each row of our proposed channel first SRAM layout. Naturality Each SRAM array stores a single channel of the input feature map. Also, each SRAM array has a word size of 8. Therefore, each time we read from an SRAM array, it would return 8 data. To utilize the large word size, our idea is to use each SRAM array to store input feature map 
from eight different inputs. The on-chip memory in the TPU is unified in that it stores both input feature map and output feature map. We address this issue by leveraging that each SRAM array is read only once per eight cycle for input feature map. So, the data reading and writing operation for input and output can be interleaved. More detail of the layout and scheduling can be found in our paper. However, the design will underutilize the systolic array when the CI is small. We propose one nifty optimization method to solve the China size issue. We propose to fill the victim memory with data from different tiles. For example, as shown in the figure, we store and compute two different tiles simultaneously. This optimization does not require any hardware modification, as its only difference from the single tile computation is the victim memory filling and address generation. This optimization also leads to the input feature map duplication in the on-chip victim memory. And the maximum num of the tiles allowed is a parameter for the trade-off between memory overhead and performance improvement. Next, I will introduce how to implement our method on GPU with tensor cores. The left finger illustrates the basic idea. The challenge in applying our method to the tensor cores is that there are usually many tensor cores on a GPU, so parallelizing the computation careful is necessary to achieve high GPU performance. We apply our implement image column method at the blocked gym level. We load the input feature map and filter data into shared memory, and the partial sum of output feature map is always stored in the register until the end of the operation. Different thread blocks update different parts of the output feature map, which avoid the atomic update. GPUs on chip SRAM PLSM is small or compared to that of the TPU, so it is important to increase the utilization of the SRAM to avoid the block gym being memory bound. We propose a reordering take named intertile reuse optimization to increase data reuse in SRAM. Our critical observation is that when the filter size is smaller than the stretch size, the corresponding tile of different decomposed filter have overlaps. The naive exclusion order of the above blocked image core is to iterate over decomposed filter. This would fetch the subtile of lower matrix in each tile first, which has no data reuse. Instead, we use a simple reordering schedule to explore the data reuse between subtiles. This optimization allows us to increase SRAM utilization and reduce SRAM filling latency. Next, I will show the experimental result of our, our method. First, we evaluate our method on TPU, which is a systolic array-based architecture. We design and implement a configurable cycle occurrence similar to TPU scene. We configure it to simulate with the same parameters as TPU v2 shown in the table. We first perform validation for the gene primitive. We vary the primitive of gene and collect exclusion cycle in the cloud TPU v2 and our simulator. We also use a similar method in the convolution validation experiment. The average error for gene and conv it's only 4.42% and 4.87%. The close performance confirms that the TPU v2 may implement a similar implicit method. For the multi tile parameter, we use a set of experiments to study it. First, we use a convolution layer with a configuration parameter shown in the table for the multi tile effect experiment. The result shows that. The required on-chip fact memory workspace increases nearly as the maximum multi-tile parameter increases, but the performance improvement shows a diminishing returns. When the parameter size of multi-tile is 3, the performance results obtained by our TPU scene match TPU v2. We also can observe that 3 is the size of WF. So, we assume that TPU set the parameter to the smaller size between WF and 128 over CI. 
Then we conduct experiments by varying the size of CI to verify the assumption. The results on the right confirm our assumption. The average error between our TPU SIM and the TPU V2 is only 5.3%. As such, we use this strategy in substantial experiments. Besides the synthetic convolution layers, we also compared the simulate and measured performance on real-world end-to-end CN models. We evaluate seven popular neural networks, which cover tasks in different domains and models of different sizes. We report the inference process with imaginate dataset. The left figure shows that our design achieved performance result match TPU v2, and the right figure shows the error distribution of simulate and measurement latency for all layers. The MAE is only 5.8%, which fuels validate our algorithm and simulator. With our validated TPU thing, we leverage its configurable feature to perform a design space exploration to understand the design choice of TPU. We first understand the impact of the systolic array size. The experimental result shows that as the array size increases, the performance increases while the utilization decreases. The utilization decreases by half with the array size increase from 128 to 256. The result highlights the design choice of 128 for balancing the performance and array utilization in TPU v2. We also evaluated the choice of word size in the vector memory. We used the OpenRAM SRAM compiler to estimate the area overhead. The result shows that as the word size increases, the SRAM error decreases and the bandwidth idle rate increases. And word size 8 achieved the maximum error efficiency. As such, TPU used word size 8. However, with the world size of 8, SRAM bandwidth utilization is also below 15%. This insight explains why the TPU V3 chose to add another systolic array to leverage this extra vector memory bandwidth. Next, we show the experimental result on tensor cores. The table on the left presents our environment configuration, and the finger on the right shows our experimental result. Our implementation is a most index to the baseline average only 1% slower. The results indicate that our infinite core algorithm is competitive to NVIDIA's implementation. Finally, we performed some case study. In studied convolution, we selected some typical operation for demonstration, and the result shows our method outperforms CoDNN by 20% on average at stread greater than 1. The right figure evaluates the effectiveness of our inter tile use optimization on GPUs. Overall, our optimization leads to an average 16.7% performance improvement. Now, we get to the conclusion. We quantity the performance and the memory overhead of explicit image to column method over implicit image to column method. We studied the first open public design of implicit image column, which is generally applicable to commercial matrix multiplication accelerators with zero memory and near zero performance overhead. We implement two concrete instances of above the implicit image column method on the TPUs and the GPUs. Thanks. Any question?